Hello, I'm John Warner. And I was inspired into engineering after seeing the Red Arrows as a young boy at an air show. I commissioned into the Royal Air Force and I served all over the world and did some incredible jobs, worked with some amazing people. And I specialised in cyber and digital. And eventually, I left the RAF just every year ago after acquiring an awful lot of gold braid on my hat. And then I chose to join CGI. And there we are in CGI. What an amazing company. And actually, when I think about it, when I was looking at what you wanted to hear, what are the values of this firm that I really align with? Well, you've got six values, but I won't go through them all. One that I really get is sharing and entrepreneurship, where there's a real culture of wanting to share with each other. And and if you find a business idea, you can take that idea and you can go with that idea. So you could be as innovative as you like to a real family business and wants to work together as a genuine team of, of people. So turning to women in engineering, um, what's, where's my advice coming from now? And I would say what's most important is do what intrigues you. Do something where you have an enduring passion. passion. Um, because when stuff gets hard, you need the courage to fight through it. And if you motivate yourself around your salary, then you won't enjoy it at all. But if you're doing something you really enjoy, you're doing something that intrigues you, then you've got, got energy to keep going. Um, and then you understand the why you're doing it. I would have said, try to do something that makes a difference. Um, try to understand why you're doing something. Um, you think about engineering overall and it, it changes the lives of millions for the better. Research, learn from the past and look at, look at the inspiring role models that have come before us and see where you can make your legacy for the future. One question we wanted to ask was, uh, so where have I found the best support? Um, over my career and, uh, and yes you'll, you'll find them from peers and colleagues and bosses but overall it's been from my mentors um, and I've, I've acquired them over a very long period of time sometimes they're all bosses they're very much close friends and half the time they don't even know they're my mentor but they'll ask me questions they'll make me think they'll never give me advice but if they make me think then I'll find something that's right for me and that'll end up giving us a, a much better outcome overall. I think about recruitment, and you asked for a moment on cybersecurity, and my reflection would be diversity and inclusivity is absolutely critical for cybersecurity. Um, it's, it's, it's not about being a deep techie, and there is a really important role for, for the deep techies in the world of cybersecurity, but it's also about the massive amount of lateral thinking needs to be done. If you think like the adversary, they're trying to outthink you. And um, I once was challenged by someone by almost scoffing, suggesting that well, why would we want a, a classic scholar in this business? And I was so wrong. I eventually met that classic scholar and she was a thorough inspiration to me. Um, she thought of things in a very different way. So it's all about diversity. When you're preparing for your interview, um, I would have said research, research, research. Ask the question. So who's going to be interviewing? Have you had a quick look on LinkedIn? Have you done a quick Google search on their names to try to see what their own online CV is? So you can walk into that interview with a bit of confidence that you know who's on the other side of the desk. Equally, you've researched the company. At least go on the website. Um, you might not be able to read the annual report. Um, they're quite difficult to decipher. But uh, is there any fake news out there about the company? That'll give you a sort of a hook to, to ask questions around as well. Watch your body language as well. Do a bit of practicing of your answers to the basic questions and do it in a mirror so you understand what that looks like or ask, ask a really trusted friend to look at your, your, the way you approach it. 93% of what um, is communication is non-verbal communication. Remember that. So a couple of good questions to ask in an interview and, uh, and always avoid the, the questions like when will I know or how much is the salary because you should know those things anyway, they, they, they'll come. 
But why not think about asking questions like, if you had your time again, what would you have explored differently? Or perhaps another one could be, um, what is it about this company that really keeps you motivated? So, and then as I do, as I close down, a final reflection about the pandemic. And uh, if we don't find a vaccine, this is, could carry on for quite some time. So we're going to be working differently, living differently, loving differently. It's all going to be very different. So there'll be less money around. So it's absolutely innovation at the forefront, finding better ways. And so it all, all comes down to that, that engineering in the end. Engineers have created some incredible opportunities over the centuries. So my bottom line would be, and it's really simple, don't look for a job. Look to solve a problem and good luck.